hey, hey. Oh, yeah. Fun thing, I decided to use it. So, usually I use this lens for the stream, which gives you like this field of view. And I wanted to show you a bit more what's going on here. And so I used it, this small one. This gives you a much wider field of view. Uh, obviously, you can see my kitchen. Um, excuse the mess. You can see my desk. You can see that my two green screens kind of don't like each other. Actually, actually. Ha! hope this wire is long enough. So, this is a new green screen. And you can see the nice construction there at the ceiling. And this is the old green curtain thingy. And I have a second one of, of these here, which are much better. But, well, if you could zoom in, the ceiling is not made for drilling. So... So let me turn this one off. The ceiling is not really made for drilling. So either you drill and, and, and you drill a little tiny hole and you have a hole like this in the ceiling and the whole shit stuff comes crumbling down. Or you drill and your titanium drill gets stuck in and burned away. And I mean, I, I know how to drill a Hole. I'm an engineer, right? So that's the reason why the green screen is not up. Although I usually would just extend this with some mess. There's some aluminum construction here that I built, and uh, I want to put uh, some wood on it. But due to the lockdown, all the DIY stores are closed, so I can't get the wood. So we will do this nice little stream in the wide angle today, and then. Uh, you go back to the other lens, right? I mean, you don't care about what I do and where I am, and, right? So let's get out of the picture and, and sorry for the mess, but that's the way it is. And let's go straight into the into into what we've been doing, right? And by the way, uh, thanks for the follow, Kersey Seven Fifteen and Poly Insecure. Oh, I guess. Uh, uh, Togglebit did a little shout out earlier in his stream. He's actually live right now, so if you get bored with me, just check him out. So he he's doing text layouting today, so that's also interesting. Um, we we're going back to this thing here today, right? Oh, performance mode, but um, yeah, we have a few thousand polys in here, so I'm totally fine with it. Let's stop that. And actually, it's been running since since last night when we stopped the stream. So, it is day three already, and we're still not doing game stuff, because we got a bit sidetracked with, uh, with the groundworks, but knowing where this project will where I want this project to go and what abstractions I want to put in, I'd rather put them in now and then put a lot of stuff on top instead of just hand-waving them away and doing a lot of stuff on top and then ripping half of it out again to, to make the abstraction work again. So I, I think today we'll actually get into rendering some game stuff. I mean... Basic game logic, uh, let's start with that today, right? So, uh, that being said, I want to add a part here that says out of scope for now, right? And I want to want put one uh, multi add multi texture support. So, one texture, uh, more than one texture in a shader. But let's ignore that. Um, the abstraction I will be building is based on my personal experience. And is this the best way to abstract a renderer? Probably not. Is it the only way to do it? No. Is it a way that has worked for me in the past? Yes, absolutely. So, so work stuff, don't contact me. I'm on vacation, is it? Is it so? I want to add some stuff that's out of scope or define stuff that we won't be doing. So we want material switching for the renderer. Um, 
I want to go one step further, and that's a nice to do, nice, nice warm up to do. I want to uh, extract uh, the render, render effect, right? So we have this concept of a material. Well, we have this concept of a material. And a material basically renders a bunch of vertices, right? It renders a bunch of vertices. That that's all it knows how to do. And then that's just basically a instance of a, of a batch. So we will have multiple of these. We will have one for one shader and one for the other shader. Or if uniforms change, they need to have different batches. Or if Shaders change if textures change. So, so material is basically a combination of shader or effect, and I'm I'm getting into why I call it effect in a minute. So, sh material is a is a combination of effect, texture, and uniforms, right? So that's something the renderer has to decide on the spot to use. So. Well, basically, the the material the material doesn't need to know which shader is active, right? The material is just pumping out. There's no no connection other than it needs to know what it needs to set. Does it make sense? So it needs to set the uniforms, and it needs to set the needs to decide uh, in which which channel do I send which attribute. So, hmm. well, there is some of that going on. So, before I yabber on too much, let's start extracting the effect, right? So, uh, step one, are we clean? And I think about, apart from the to-do, we are clean. So, source, render, uh, effect dot rs right and midterm this probably will end up being a trade right now i just i just go very simple so i have the effect pop struct and i probably should should make this pop great uh, but we're not going there for the moment i i really need to create that macro The upside is my typing for this gets better. So that this is the this is an effect, and and the signature for the new uh, will change. Not sure if we use a builder again. So effect knows its shaders, and its ID, right? So maybe we don't go with a builder. We just go with a. With a plain old new, I'm I'm fine with that. And then let's hook this up because we usually forget to do that, and then wonder why it's compiling, even if it shouldn't. So mod effect pop use effect effect as effect, right? And if I do a cargo check now, and I also need a need a macro for the cargo check actually. So this is still working, and now um, let's let's actually go. I the thing is, if I have the effect on this side and the material on this side, actually all the shader stuff we did belongs in here. So technically, the material. The render gets passed in the effect. And and that's all. Probably in the new, it gets passed in as well because there's some some correlation of information. But so we we're gonna we're gonna move something. So basically, we need some of this. I mean, we need a shader type. We need the program. We need GL, and we need debug. Um, let's derive debug because it's always good to do that. And basically, we have a program, right? 
the render effect owns the program. And then how do we do this? Still on warm up mode, so let's let's do it the other way around this time as program new. And then here we just say program colon, we use the shorthand. And then we say I Basically, we say program at shader, mm, shader type vertex, and this is just the, uh, do we pass in the string? Do we, where, who does the file handling, basically? Last time we did it in the renderer. Did we? Oh, we did it in the material builder, right? So we had a build with system. Maybe the new just needs the system. Maybe we just pass everything in to make our lives much more complicated for now. So. What we will need is we will need system. Yeah, now the phone is ringing for the phone call I've been expecting all morning long. Uh, not gonna happen. So we're trying out a few different different paradigms here, and in the in the process of that we are gonna swing back and forth between different variations so an effect has a system it has uh, it has a name right it has an ID How about doing this? It has a name. It has a vertex shader name. And this is becoming far too long, so let's break this down. I miss header files, really, where you could just, just write out your thoughts and get the general feeling for the layout. And it has a vertex shader name. It has a frag and fragment shader name. I'm And this will return uh, self, right? And right now this just calls effect new. And then we do what we did with the material, the builder, right? So basically we do this. Basically, we do this, right? And this is, uh, obviously, we have to, let's actually, there's one reason why I used to create versus the new, and I will tell you in a second. Abstractions up on abstractions, I know, so. Let's 
so let's break everything we built yesterday but we're in speed mode today because I want to catch some sunshine. So obviously this is program here. So this means we have a way to create an effect, right? To create an effect and then The render of the material. I'm going to do the usual comment it out first. We don't have a program. And oh, these we can. These are gone. And then the render gets. Uh, I can rename it. The render gets a effect, right? It doesn't need that right now. Well, it needs the R use on that. Hmm. Who? Actually, let's think about this. So let's let's comment this out. So now we don't have a program anymore, right? I wonder if it even compiles, you know, because... Oh. Yes, because it's at... Shader. Where's the shader type, right? Abstractions up on abstractions all the way down. And we didn't use the shader type, right? We removed it. No, it's still there. Okay. Always start with something simple as the first thing in the day and where do we call effect new? here. So for now this is just a pass through. There is a reason why I want to do this. That will probably not become clear for another week. Sorry about that. But if I go into this I lose sunlight. Oh, the material builder. I mean, probably we don't need the material builder now anymore. Basically, this is gone. Yeah, I should have. This is the thing. I knew I would need to factor out the effect yesterday, but I wanted to go to the gold line. So we had a little less pain yesterday and a little pay more pain today. And maybe we don't even need the material builder. Right? But. Start with something and then iterate it towards where we need it to be was al always the plan for this. So I'm not too worried yet. It needs to, it will stay st settle down in a while. This is V0. So obviously the renderer now doesn't know this stuff, right? So I'm wondering what the effect actually know 
what the material actually needs to know. I mean, if I do a cargo run now, we will see nothing because we don't have a shader. We don't have a program. We don't have a GPU program. We have a program, I mean. We have a window and stuff. Uh, so everything is still working. We just don't see it. So So that's fine. So what I need is uh, basically basically we're, we're gonna do this by name for the moment. We will do this by name. Don't do this at home. So we have effects. And that is a hash map of um, of string, and we could say effect here, right? And then we say uh, hack create one effect. E equal effect create and this will need the system. This will have a name, that name is default and that will be the default fragment uh, vertex shader. And this is where the danger comes in because we pass three strings that are untyped, which makes me a bit scared. But in the end, in the final version, we will load them from a config file anyway. I just don't want to add config file loading now. We just have to say, load all effects. One of them is named default and has these shaders and these settings. So um, this will need more data. For example, what attributes are available, but we do that after the config because this is so we have one effect and then basically this probably should store its name somewhere I need to check to owned versus string at some point, but not now, and I will forget. So, and then I want to have something that says uh, pop fn register effect, right? And that just gets the effect, and that takes the effect. That will take ownership. So here we say self.register effect and pass in the E, right? So this takes does take ownership. Yes, because you stood collections hash map. And then what was the other one? Oh, missing effects. Yeah, so so there's one magic thing about the first entry here. So 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 that's fine. And then I wonder when the material renders. Do we get the effect or not? We don't need it, right? So what we could do is when we do the end frame. So the 
the material no switch effect is uh, to do ask material for effect, right? And then basically we say let e equals self dot effects dot first. And then we say e. I, I'm not sure I want to do this. The uniforms will live in the material. So let, let slow steps. Let's do it like this and basically add a pop function. That's where my picture comes in now. Function use. I'm not so happy about this. And this will do a program. R use, right? And refactoring, I like intermediate steps. Uh, I should close a few of these windows, I know. Rust, uh, hash map. Can I get the first value? I can just do values and then... Right? I can just do an iter and then the iterator has a take one probably it has a borrow right so can can I can I just does a hash map implement Can I just get the first one, please? Well, actually, actually, um, actually, what we will do is effect default effect name as a string. Default effect name as string new and basically here we say uh, here we say self dot default effect name equals uh, e dot name to string right so this has a getter for for the name Oh, I'm shooting myself in the foot so badly right now. So we get the name and the, we just register this as the default. And I just realized that the register effect, uh, basically uh, self.effects.insert.effect.name, comma. Right. Probably we could just say the first one that's registered is the default always. Yes, I might have meant to use self the program actually. Thank you. I'm always getting stuck in C plus C plus plus. This is automatic for methods, so but self obviously is not. Expected string found string. Yes, that is correct, because we need to actually copy clone the name. And we want to get rid of the name at some point. We probably just store a hash, but um, and obviously this is not going to work. So 
So what we're gonna do is let e equals self dot effects dot get uh, self dot default effect name. And if this is non, we can just panic. Panic no default render effect. Right. We'll complain about mutability. We'll fix that in a second. And if that's some e, we just return the e, right? Yes, I know it will complain, but I want to see the error message. True. Mm, there's one reason I'm hesitating. Because these things need to be shared. Uh, right now with the current model, it doesn't need to be shared, right? Yeah, that, that was the one we expected, right? So this needs to be... Probably we need to do a get mute on the hash map. I'm not sure if it's implicit. Yes, because the hash map has a get mute, I'm pretty sure. It has a get mute. Still learning Rust, forgive me, my ignorance. That's why this is the first big project I do in Rust, so I did lots of tiny tools and helpers and stuff, a lot of them on stream. Cannot borrow as mutable because uh, Oh, me muting the mute. Oh, we're missing a borrow now. Ah! World implodes. I expect a panic. I want a panic. Panic, panic, panic. That's not the panic I've been looking for. So we extracted the render effect and we e extracted exactly one render effect now. So what we can do is say we have an active uh, effect name, which is also a string. So D, and then we have uh, basically this, right? And actually, we also use this. I'm leaning towards putting this in here and just saying if it's the first one, but so then this here actually becomes a bit more complex cause. Basically, we can just copy it in here, right? So give me a second to format this. So the idea is we get the active effect. If there is no active effect, we fall back to default, right? Which in this case, active is default, so it doesn't make any difference. Probably have one semicolon too much here. Always do. Do 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 do. So this is still working, and we have the fallback. And actually, we don't want the active effect. We want the one the material uses, right? 
So a material, when I create it, and I probably want to get rid of the whole material builder, right? Because all it does is a new now. All it does is a new on the material now. So what I want here, I want the material to know its effect name, right? And probably should be an ID. Maybe you want an effect manager. Mm -hmm. So effect name is string new. Right, clear at vertex render. This is all nice. This can go away because we program needs to be used before. I'll tell you what. For reasons that will become clear down the road, I pass in the effect here and then here say effect.r hash use, right? And then basically the renderer, instead of doing that, it calls the render with uh, mutable reference to e. Right, because the material will have the uniforms and they will be bound and then the program has to be used so we can't do it before that. And I have a effect is not found in the material which is totally true. I mean, That was everything. Wide angle or tiny lens? Yeah, it's it's this. I like that I have to tell it, hey, use the reference, but basically it's hiding the fact because how do you see that this is mutable here and not just copying or moving, right? How how do you know it's a mutable reference there? It's that's a bit of inconsistency in the language there, which makes it sometimes very hard to read and to copy code around. So well, that is still working, well, working again. Um, the whole material thing, the material builder thing, uh, let's disconnect this and see what happens. Yeah, we're still where we're exactly where we were last night, but there is a reason for this. Renderer RS uses the material builder on line 76 to build the so basically what we can say is uh, let m equals material new, right? We don't need the builder because it doesn't need the system. We were kind of a bit distracted there and I wanted to do the builder pattern. Probably a bit of overkill there, so we can get rid of the material builder for good. Which is good. I like. Oh, until I re edit. So, what I want to do is. So, there's two things.
So I want to uh, get mutable default effect, right? And that's basically uh, that's this, right? Well, basically, it's it's the whole match, right? So either I get it or we panic because we all we we pretend we always have. Thank you for killing the formatting. So this will get the default effect or panic, right? So that makes this part much easier because we can just say self get this, right? Encapsulation, good. Reuse, good. Oh, almost. Oh, come on. Really? Mm. So I cannot clean up my code because the borrow checker won't let me. That's a bit frustrating. I mean, this is identical, right? We could extract it into an effect manager, and but I don't want to. It's the same code, one layer deeper, and it should be a well. It cannot know that we only borrow need to borrow a part of it, right? We pass in the whole thing. It cannot know that that it only needs a piece of it. It is fine, but what I actually wanted to do, I wanted to say here. Here I say let e equal self dot get default effect because the material needs the effect, right? Because the material will need the effect reference, and then it's just uh, effect dot name, right? To string. It can do more, like figure out what does a shader need, get uniform locations, all of that. Um, but right now it's just for the name. So that works. And the nice thing is now we can actually um, we can actually say um, effect name, right? So the material knows which effect it wants. There's a bit of psych circular dependency there, which I would like to resolve, but today we go fast, we said, right? So self.effect name. And that means, actually, do we have a counter here in the renderer? Let, let's do a uh, frame, and that's just uh, Q64, right? This is this is just the frame counter, and then on end frame at the very end we say self dot frame. We count it up because I want to do a trick here. So I want to say.
the let debug equal self dot fray percent. So let's say every one hundred frames equals zero. So if debug print line rendering material with effect rendered not rendering we'll fix that in a second so that is material and that is e right Let's see if that works the way I want it. If we had rendering already, we would just have a console that we can turn on and uh, expected lifetime parameter. Why? But there is no value for it to be borrowed from. Well, there is. Oh. <laughs> Good one. I was about to add lifetimes and was like, dude, what? Okay, so we really... We really, this is a material. Uh, what I want to do is we, we don't derive debug here, but we, uh, where do we have it? We have it in file system, right? We just manually implemented debug and I don't want the vertices in there. So for material, that doesn't need to be dynamic. Material. Actually, uh, just for you. So, material. Material file system, yeah. Maybe not just for you. Maybe for me as well. So we have uh, the buffer, we have the VAO, and we have the self dot effect name, right? Maybe, maybe not. I I wish there was a derive debug but skip this this member. So this this is much nicer, right? So now every few frames we get rendered material uh, one one effect default. So the material has no name, and it uses the effect default, right? So. If I go into the renderer and just hack the loading a bit, because all we need to do is basically, we don't need this and we had the white, white fragment shader. So we had this white, right? We had this white, right? So we call this white. Names, so we, we have two in the system now, right? So nothing changes. And this 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 is what we want it to be, right? To have more than one render effect. So this is still using default, right? So if I say I activate white now, Uh, 
Come on. It uses the white one, uh, which doesn't help us because it's still global. What, but what we can do is uh, we can say here, somewhere in the render logic, probably here we could say pop pop function use effect, right? And and I really don't want to use names here, but Use FS, FSE, use effect, and then we can say self dot active effect name equals effect name. So at least we can externally change it now. So we could go into the fish app and at least say here, I mean, we could just say renderer use effect white, right? And we really want to get rid of the... I'm run this and I'm gonna show you how I do this in render. Oops. So we have a global setting now that allows us to switch render effects and and um, oh yes, I did. Yes, I did indeed. What's the time? What is the time? I don't have a timer anywhere, which is nice. Oh, actually, we do this inside here. We only do it after the begin frame, right? Oh, actually, let's do it after the... It doesn't matter. Because the clear is instant, which we might not want. So we don't have a render command pipeline. <laughs> we don't have a render command pipeline, so all our direct commands like clear with color apply directly. They are not kind of cute, but the batches are there. So we can use, use white now, or we can use default, right? And just close, close. I'm not sure why this is compiling so long. So we can do this, but what we actually want is, okay, use default up here, right? But for the cursor, can we please use white? And actually that's what we wrote yesterday, but we saw it, it's material, right? And this will just say, mm -hmm. everything is white now, because we have still only have one material and the effect is only. So, so what we will need to do is in the renderer, when we say use effect, we might want to switch the material, right? Maybe we need a second material. So, so we do have an active material. This could be an option material. Active, actually, this is this is a vector, so active material index, right? So this is just a U size, and we always have one material, so the active material index is always zero, right? And then just like we have a get 
mute default effect, we have a event get mute active material, right? And then we basically say match self dot materials dot get uh, self dot active material index and non means uh, panic no active material right. We should never get into a state where we don't have an active material and otherwise we just return M, right? So wherever we use material, well, in the begin we clear, in the end we, but wherever we add a vertex, for example, well, where we add a triangle, this here, oh, we already have active materials, right? So, <sighs> <laughs> We can't use the freaking wrapper. We can't use the wrapper because wouldn't it be nice just to say self get mute active material and then say let m equal and then use this m so m Basically, get rid of this, 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 and he, and maybe just call it material. Wouldn't this be nice? But... Well, this, this is still okay. Well... Oh. Wait. Huh? Expected mutable reference found reference. Why? Why? Oh. No, this this Wait. I mean it will fail anyway. In render line eighty one. Oh, my bad. I'm an idiot. I'm an idiot. I'm an idiot. I'm an idiot. Idiota. And this doesn't work because we try to borrow. So a material manager has materials, right? And this has an active material, material index, right? I didn't want to go there. So if I added the get active material to that, and then we have a pop at material, mute self, material, material, and that moves ownership, right? So me say self dot push material. 
right? So we have a material manager. So instead of materials, we have a material manager. Materials is gone. Active material is gone, right? So here, material manager. Material manager. I don't like it. But that means the active index is here. The initialization is correct, but that means uh, we say self dot material manager. Did we say add? Add material, right? Maybe it's just add in this case because it is a material, right? So it's just add. So we do this because self materials doesn't exist. And wherever we use self dot materials, we need an it, it mutter material manager. But that's easy, right? We could just, we probably can just do, we could create a new self oh, to be defined. Uh, we can just do self that materials dot iter merge, right? We can just pass it out. The, the type is not correct. We fix that in a minute because I'm lazy. Well, let's let's finish this search. So that's internal. That's fine. Right. So. Material manager get active material, and probably we just call it get active because we know it's just materials, right? Right? Am I digging myself a big deep hole right now? Method not found in material manager. What? Okay, material manager needs to derive debug, which is fine for me. The less I type, the more I forget what I need to type, if I need to type it. Hooray tools. So what, what, what am I? Okay. Yep, here's a U8. Shut up, I know that's not what you're returning. But you will tell me what you expected, right? <laughs> Oopsie. We talked about this, right? I really want a macro. Oh man. And the next error is the actual one. Found standard slice it a mute. Actually, that's exactly what we want, right? I, I told you I'm too lazy to think about this. I just let the compiler tell me. Okay, you're right. So because it's in a in a 
different subpart of self for the renderer. We don't have them all. We borrow subparts of the trees. So this is nice. So the thing is, this also is, is much nicer to read, right? We always have a material. Sometimes we just make assumptions about stuff. If we don't have a material here, something got broken, so don't even try to fix it or analyze it. Just uh, And the render quad just uses the add triangle, so we always use the active material now. So it could probably do the same for the... I mean... What if he said... We could make this generic, right? I mean, the material... We could say... This is active index, actually. And we need to set the active index at some point. And this is... You could make this a generic. Uh, pop set active node self index u size. Self dot active index is index. Right, so we could make this whole manager thing pretty generic. We could just template this. We could just say T, right? Oh, that, that's an interesting salt. Let's keep that for future reference. So, but when we do the use effect, right? We have an active effect name. And we have somehow an active material, right? So basically, um, we need something that says function uh, switch material if needed. Switch active material is needed, right? So when we use effect, if I call white, 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 we can just continue going, right? So basically what I need to do is let m equal self dot material manager get, and I just need a get active here. I don't get it mutable. So let's add a get active here const, non-const versions. That means I get a reference here. And this is a bit nicer, right? Sweet. Well, so we get the current material and then we ask, uh, basically, can render So we get the active effect. So we get e equals self dot get get active effect, right? Which needs to be done. Let's do this. So get active effect. We have a get default effect, but we want to get a Active effect, which is non mute. Did I, did I forget to remove the mute down there? Probably. Active effect name, and we don't need the. No. And we always have some. So let me just check something. I think this mutable here can go. Yep. So if I go to switch 
So basically we say, okay, we set the active effect name and then we say, okay, self dot switch, switch the material if we need it, right? So something changed that might have affected the active material. Oh, has a function missing. I need a sugar break. Cake? Cake or ice cream? It's 12.30. Actually, let's go for a bike ride and have some ice cream. Nope. Well, yes. So this is still working, still not doing the right thing. So let, let's go back to the switch active material. Basically, we asked the active material can render, and by the way, here's the effect, right? Can you render this? Basically we say pop function, can you render this? And for now it just gets the effect, right? Probably it will need more. It, it will need a lot more, so... Hmm. So, so let's say we just lie here, right? So, if it can't render it, right? Then we have to go through all the existing render if materials. So, for um, in um, self dot material manager it uh, mutable, and we say if um, can render this. let found material equals false then we say found material equals true right and we need to <laughs> say self that material oh, foo So I want to say set active, basically E, right? Uh, M. But I can't. I can't. Because <laughs> this M here is borrowed mutably from the material manager, so I can't call the material manager mutably. But what we can do is uh, let's call it select active. And that will get a function, right? A function f. And that will basically return a bool. Maybe that, that's the pattern. And we need to say where um, we did this for. We did this in Cheval, right? I can't remember the syntax, sorry. We did this in the callback for, actually it's Expresso. Mm, function table, so basically we want, okay, where function signature. That's easy, so basically we say where F, 
where f colon is a function that retrieves a retrieves a material and returns a bool, right? So what we then can do once we implemented that is we can just say, okay, uh, where's our switch active? Yeah. So here we just say uh, self dot material manage dot set active set active. Uh, yeah, I could have done this. And what is the function? The function is basically uh, this receives the material. So this is m m dot can render. E, right? And let's just store this result uh, implementation to be done. But basically, we say okay, if the current material can't render it, and that is that is non mutable, so this should be fine, then Please, material manager, set the new active based on somebody returning true here, right? So let me do a quick cargo check if my brain is thinking correctly. If, if I'm able to type correctly, so I might be able to get there. I need, I need a break. I need a break, but I want to do this material switching first. Why do you need type annotations? Okay, step one, the set active. Uh, let's just say we didn't find an active one. Basically, we try to current current material cannot render what we want, so let's find one that can, and if it, if we can't find one that can create it, right? Why does this closure need type annotations? Why? I mean, I can do that, but I don't get why you need this at this point. I I could just. I could do that. Oh, because we're not calling it. Okay, we're not doing anything in the other end of it. Mismatch type, accepted U size found closure. What? Set. Ah, it's select active. And the side effect is uh, if the act active is not selected, so. So let can render equals m dot can render e right, and then we just say can render because. That means we don't need the M after this anymore, right? <sighs> 
So what if what if we scope this? So the active effect we get first, and then we get the material inside here, right? So this borrow here, this mut immutable borrow here should end its lifetime here, right? And then we could have ju just done the old school way, so. I mean, we don't need the effect, we just need the name, right? Assuming names are unique. I mean, this is such straightforward code and so trivial and no risk of broken side effects. Hmm. I mean, we could make this super trivial, right? What if every effect had an ID? Let's say we have up to 65,000 effects. Probably we only have 256, but... And then we say effect new... Rust uh, class variables. Rust variables had. What is a. Uh, Traits. Uh, Docs and generics, yeah, it's, I don't want to inheritance. Basically, I want something that is uh, let next id u size equals one, right? And then here I just want to say uh, ID is next ID, right? Let ID equal next ID, next id plus equals one, right? So then I can just use this. This, this is not going to work, I know. But let's assume effect set an id, and we just did id-based looker instead of the stupid name-based crap. Mm. How do I do class variables in How do I do class variables? I never used one. 
What is a variable? Initialize a variable. Type change. Rust variable scope struct. Well, <laughs> this is not useful because I don't want hmm. <laughs> so what if the default ID just was zero and we had a pub function set ID? I mean, now we have to can generate a factory that remembers surrender effect IDs, and I, I get all that, but I want to... Right? So what if... Uh, what if when we... Register an effect. After we register an effect, it gets an ID. So, effect.set ID equal to self dot effects.lex, right? So the first one gets a zero, the second, well, let's say plus one to avoid the zero, right? So now effects have IDs. So the material can render Now we can say effect ID U16 is basically effect ID and then basically the can render just gets the effect ID, right? It's probably better anyway. So when we switch the active material, get active effect, uh, and that's the EID, right? And then we got rid of this borrow because it doesn't live anymore at this point, I hope. Uh, we're machen es kaputt. Oh, yeah, the next ID thing. Uh, maybe I should clean that up. Yeah, we should have an effect factory that hands out the IDs and blah, blah, blah. And that is fine, because... As you 16, right? If we could add an assert if you ever have more than 65,000 file, 65,000, but mm, can render E 
yeah, that's true. That's the stuff we just removed because basically can render EID, right? And then here can render EID. No, e.id, because we don't want the material manager to have knowledge, right? Cannot find e, because... Oh. Wait, can render. Oh, <laughs> yeah, it's time for a break, time for a break, time for a break. I'm sorry about this. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I have to take a break and get some fresh air and exercise. Cannot borrow effect as mutable as it is not declared as mutable. Fair enough, I mean, we want ownership, right? So all of these are mutable. Wait. Ooh. So this will totally blow apart because I only wrote half the code. Borrow checker. I mean, the borrow checker was correct. There was a risk of us. Um, so we're rendering with ID2. The problem I have now is if I go to end frame here and basically say if debug uh, dbg self, right? Maybe every 100 frames is too much. Let's do it every 500 frames. Oh, we don't change the active material and we don't create the new one, right? So right now we have exactly Ignoring the vertices, which are still in here, but we have the default effect with an ID of one, and the pro shader IDs are one and two, and the program is three. And we have the white effect with ID two, shaders four and five, program six. And we have the default effect name. Maybe we just default effect is default and active is white. Um, maybe I want self dot material manager, right? So what we need to see is two materials, right? And nobody is ever creating a second material. So we do have one material and that material actually debugs. Maybe it should debug the effect ID as well. So let's do this. So we have one material, and that's the that uses the default effect. But actually, we're using that for the white stuff because. Um, because if we look at the switch material, basically we say, um, we say, uh, if not found material, then we say, hey, 
didn't find material for this, right? Effect ID this, right? And this should only trigger once in theory. Oh, I need a break. Basic render abstraction is only so. Wait. This should be called twice per frame, right? Oh, yeah. But our material is lying. So we say we, we're switching between these two, but our material basically says, yep, I can render this, right? What it should do is say if self dot effect ID equals effect ID. If we're asked to render the effect that we were built with, and this this will become more complex. But if we're asked so so only we right now we only built a default material. So as soon as we're asked to render white, the material will say mm, I can't do that, so so we switch to default, and default is fine because that's a currently active. But then it didn't find one for material ID two, right? And let's let's actually do this. Wow, this was a large chunk of boilerplate, but we were this close. We're really close. We are really close. So basically it says, hey, effect ID 2 for, for white. Well, duh. So what do we do in this case? Well, that's pretty simple. That is the case where we say, I mean, how do we create a material, right? We we create a material and add it. So, so what we can do here, if we didn't find the material, we just create a new material. And that will need the active effect. So We pass in the active effect when we create a new material. That's this here. And then we add it to the material manager. And the add should probably give us back the index, right? So. Let i equal self dot materials dot length, and then we return that i right, and then we because uh, when we create a new one, in this case uh, we want to make it active, right? So self dot material manager dot set active basically i let i right. So. The current one can't render it. We can't find a new one, and this is this is currently always returning false. So, but we we the current one can't render it. We couldn't find any other that could render it. So let's let's create a new one and make that active, right? So this will probably create lots of materials now.
Well, this is this is creating quite a lot of materials now because you see here um, whenever we switch the material, it will create a new one. So it will never reuse an existing one, and that's exactly not what we want. So let's implement that select active, right? So what does this actually do? We say for element, well, it's a material, 4m in self.materials.inter. Doesn't need to be mutable, right? We say if f with m return true, right? So as soon as we find the first one that says whatever your your condition is is true, we say yep, let's use that. And actually, <sighs> Rust vector iterate with index. I need the index. Oh, I can enumerate it, right? So, pos and element. So, I can basically enumerate the iterator. I always forget that I can, how to do that. So, this means I get a I am. And in this case, I just say self dot uh, active index equal. Oh, come on! Now I iterate the material, so I can do this, right? I couldn't call the set active. So everything is white, but the interesting thing is we have two materials now, right? And if I go to the start of the program, so we didn't find it an effect for white exactly once, and then we create it, and then we always find it. So at the end, we only have two materials, right? So we have one, it's basically one, one, default one, and one with two, two, white, two. And it's using the wrong effect right now. But that's fine, because if I go into render, well, into the end frame. So here, basically, we get the active effect name, right? But what we actually want to do is uh, we want to say let ename effect name equals uh, material dot effect name, right? And yes, we borrow this, but basically then we can use effect name here, right? So the, we ask the material, which effect do you want? Which, which effect are you responsible for? And um, What? Oh, let me try to borrow the borrow. Oh, white mouse, pink, well, colored, other quads, right? So we can draw in color, but our mouse will always be white. 
So you see here rendered material and it's actually using the correct effect ID. Tough work, yeah, tough work. Totally, I get it. So we have a white and a default effect now. Let's look at our to-do. So we extracted the render effect and we are allowing material switching for renderer, right? And thus we can use multiple shaders and we, we could do into fish app technically and could say I don't know, we could say, I want to put it in a place where it's not too noisy. We say basically, if I percent one equals zero. So only the odd ones. Oh, zero is one is probably a bad idea. Only the even ones. If it's even, we say renderer, use, use, effect, uh, white, right, else render a use effect, uh, use effect default, right? That's for the spinning circle, we saying not for anything else. And we can switch that every other quad if we want to, so it's hard to see, but it's half of them are semi-transparent and rainbowed and some are white, and we still only have two materials. And actually, I want to add one more thing to the material. I want the render to return the number of U32, and that's basically the number of rendered triangles, right? So. So just just to prove, um, it's it's nice for statistics later anyway. Uh, but rendered vertices for material and the let v equal v c for ver vertice count equals yada yada yada. So we can see that we rendered 300 vertices for material default and 306 for the other. If I add a few now, they all use the default material. So I have 600,000 for the default material and still 306 for the default. So 306 is these, uh, these 100, well, half of the 150 times three and then obviously the cursor. All right, so a quad has six uh, vertices times 50 quads is 300 plus six for the cursor. So a nice thing is the renderer doesn't have to, the game now doesn't have to care. How do you match it? How do they hook up together? And uh, I mean, ideally what I would use, uh, So here we use effect names. Would be really nice to use uh, effect ID. I mean, that's how we do it in the. Where's my Xcode? Dude, where's my Xcode? So here, here we have. No, I don't want to print this. Uh, I want to open effect 
effect i render effect ids dot hpp so basically these are the ids right that's just an enum and we just use the id directly and we use the name for this so probably at one point we will do that for now i'm totally fine with the names I probably want to change them to be. So I want to capitalize this. And this will just use a default render for everything because in the renderer. So technically in the future, the renderer will not self -red register the, the effects, right? This will be done uh, externally by somebody who says, hey, by the way, renderer, renderer, register this effect for me, right? I know what I'm doing, just register this effect for me. Can I, is, is it? Rust enum to u8, enum to a number. Fair enough. So we could have an enum of the effect IDs, right? And then the effect name would just get the... Okay, I'm gonna commit this. Well, but let's see... Uh, Let's see where we are. So we extracted the render effect. We actually use that in, in the app, right? And we did a lot of material changes and registering for the effects and getting the setup as a hack. And we're gonna, gonna fix that in a minute. Um, we add the effect to the material so the material knows. Probably it doesn't need the name. The ID should be plenty. And then it knows how to render it. This is basically for debugging and lookup. And the renderer gets the effect because it has to use it. Um, it returns the amount of vertices rendered and yeah. This is the material builder is basically history, so deprecated for now to do remove. Right, so It's not hooked up anywhere, so it should be fine. I just want to have one, as usual, one last commit that says, hey, we don't need this anymore. So it was everybody looking at the commit sees it wasn't an accident. So, yep. So we commit the dead material builder and we add the effect, right? Patch, rebase push as usual everything as so i need to click close some tabs but i never do so as usual everything is here i will take a five minute coffee refill and bio break then we do the effect id thingy Then we do the effect ID thingy. And then we'll see. So be back in a minute.
Are we happy? Do I have a halo? Am I too stupid to use my microphone? Yay! So, no more breaks. Oh, I like how this window maps. Okay, enough fun. Enough fun. Back, back, back to work. So, so what I would like, and this is um, this is sidebar, right? So, we have fish inside here. Basically, inside fish. Let's say touch source fish effect. IDs.rs, right? What if... And I'm gonna toggle the sidebar, because nobody needs that. Effect ID. So we have a pop enum effect IDs, right? And the first one is default. Right, and the second one is white. And then basically we we derive copy and clone, which is fine. We probably want debug too. And yes, alphabetical, but I want debug first. Shut up. And then I can just... Uh, Do S on that. So these are our effect IDs, right? And then basically when I create an effect, instead of having the ID setter, ID setter, the create actually gets the ID, right? That's a U16. So this is passed through, and probably the create could just be the new and then I just say ID is ID, right? That part is easy. So the register and, and now here here comes the this here. Technically, <laughs> nice. So I go into fish dot app. Mm. Basically, I say mod effect IDs, right? And then I just say use use effect IDs effect IDs right. Should have thought about that earlier. Would have saved a lot of time, but we broke everything now. So set ID is not used anymore. Yes, because the fish. Actually, in the setup, when it's done, probably it loads it from the config. So we set up the renderer, and basically, then we say renderer. Oh, I basically say okay. And you could just say renderer dot register effect, and then do effects. Basically, this right. We do this. We do this. But we also want an ID, right? So we do this, and the ID is effect IDs default, right? As you sixteen. I I was the wish there was an automatic. And then we do the same for the white one. Oh, basically we could have, well, we can just type white here and type white here. And you can see that this could be loaded from a, from an extra config file, right? 
I just want them to align. So you can easier see if something's broken. So this this is and it's renderer, not render. I'm not sure why I always do this. So we register the render effects here, so we don't need to register the render effects here, right? And basically the set ID is gone. If self dot effects dot length is zero. If this is the first one, right? We say self dot default effect name equals effect dot name to string, right? The first effect that's re registered is our default. So if somebody forgets to set up the renderer and tries to use it, well, da. So this this works, right? So about the default material, um, we don't have one yet. So what what happens if we don't add a material, right? So that means if somebody is trying to render, okay. Let's say self dot use effect. Uh, self dot default effect name right at the beginning of the frame we just use the default effect may have some fallout to clean up from that oh that is true this is self dot system and that will need a mutable reference. So that is step one and the other one we fix when it's standalone. <laughs> Effect not found. That's a nice one, I mean. So we, we separated the, the renderer and the setup of the renderer, right? It doesn't set up itself. No effect IDs in fish app. Yes, because it's super. The mod handling in Rust is slowly driving me crazy. I mean, for 30 years in, and the C++ guys finally get it under control, and uh, LS source fish. Touch source fish dot R. Oh, we have a fish dot rs. Okay, that means this can fish. Right? Probably also crate, pop crate, but. Remove this semicolon. In effect IDs. Oh, come on, really? Why, why not just leave it there? It makes sense. Okay, and we have to borrow that in the renderer, which is which which is fine, right? So, one twenty three in the renderer. Yep, we have to borrow this here. Can be. S <laughs> Let's uh, default effect name equal self dot default effect name. Dot 
clone. I ain't for reals. It can't know, yes, but sometimes it's just cargo run release, so in theory nothing should have changed, well, almost nothing. Oh, nice. Panic, no active material in source render 284. Hmm. So, <laughs> so here's the interesting bit. Um, we do a switch active material if needed, right? And and maybe get active here. So we use we use say use effect. Where is this use effect? It's in renderer. Okay, let's run a debug build. I, I know what's going on, but I want to explain. Don't have to explain that I know. I... So, we try to use, at begin frame, we use the effect, right? That's in line one, line eight. So we try to use the effect and then we switch active material if needed, right? So technically we could have a check if this is the same, we don't need to switch, but that's optimization. So, so then we go in here and then the get active basically says, uh, uh, we don't have an active one, right? This says, you never gave me an active one. So, um, mm -hmm. So basically, the get active here, well, the get, okay, the get active here is saying there's no, it, there's no active material, right? And probably it's trying to get index zero. So basically we said, okay, we don't have a material yet. So the thing is, if at the beginning, this, this is a cheat, right? This is a cheat. Technically, we don't need this, but we need a material, right? So if, If self dot material manager dot length equals zero, right? And the material manager currently doesn't have a length, so let's add this. Ah, that needs a self here. So so if we don't have a material, we need to create one, right? How do we create a material? Well, we have the code and the switch active material, right? So we basically do this and I don't want to extract it uh, this will only ever trigger once. And sure, we have at least one material and it is active. So otherwise we just keep active whatever what was there and maybe, maybe we have 15 materials, but in that screen only one of them is used, so. So we deferred creating the default material and what did I mess up now? Get active effect now panics because, uh, oh. Let's 
let's use the let's use the default effect, right? Why why does this need to be? I think this doesn't need to be mutable. So here we say get default effect. So somebody tried to render without ever registering an effect, right? So render align 73. What did I do wrong here? Wait, what? Oh, um, here. So that was was part one of it, right? And the white is not. Why is the white not working? Oh. Why did we kill the white? So didn't find material for effect ID one white. Oh, why is effect ID one? So this is using effect IDs. Something is wrong with the effect IDs here. Because uh, mm -hmm. where So we are didn't find material for effect ID two white, and then we say rendered material one with ID one, and rendered two with two. Did we make a copy and paste error? We did make a copy and paste error, didn't we? So if I look into fish app here into the initialize, uh, the vertex shader here is default and the fragment shader is white, right? So we need better error handling, but we knew that. We did know that. Probably invalid is wrong, it's none, so, so we're back where we were. So let's call the effect, let's call this none. Well, actually, yeah, let's keep it like this. And why did we do the ID based thing? Because now, when we say use effect, wouldn't it be nice if we could say use effect? Uh, Render if, if, if fact ID ID uh, default right. So the renderer Renderer doesn't care, right? So use effect uh, effect ID, which is a U16 active effect uh, ID is effect ID. Basically, the effect name is gone. So default effect ID is U16. 
active effect ID is U16, right? And then we change that in 8,000 places. Uh, default effect ID is basically EID. Uh, effect. No, I, it's just ID, right? My neighbors are making this crazy. We still have the hash map, with, which is based on the. I mean, this this should could just be based on the IDs, right? And I probably. So the get def uh, default effect ID, default effect, uh, active effect ID, and here basically we get the effect ID, right? So the material knows its effect ID, yes, and we probably want a getter for that. The, the human readable strings are just for us, right? Otherwise, we get the default effect by ID. Active effect name is self active effect. Probably doubled up the debug here. Let's do a quick check because I'm pretty sure I forgot like eight places. Oh, okay. Expected reference get mutable. No, I'm not gonna borrow. Really? <sighs> really, we borrow the effect ID here. Okay. Um. Okay, effect ID. Probably we just copy it here, right? That's fine. Mismatch type. That's just fish app. The all the places. So F. Everywhere. Basically, this is old and this is new, right? So, this, this, and this. So, this is white. This is default. This is white. And suddenly we are type safe and nobody can mistype. Imagine you have mistyped white somehow. Use of undeclared effect ID. Oh. Ooh, probably this should be effect ID, right? The file is effect IDs, but the thing is effect ID. Yes, and that is true. Hmm. 
not happy with the SU-16, but... I mean, basically the renderer would need to define the type, and then we would need to extend an enum based on that type, right? So actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to cheat a bit, so it will only be white, only one out of ten will be white, right? So we can see something. That's a bit weird, but... So that works, this works, and I just want to see one debug output before I stop it. Every 500 frames or so. So we rendered a few thousand vertices with this material, which is, and the default effect, and then 66 with this material and this effect, right? And at the end, we have two materials. So the batching is working nicely, and with that, I will clean this up a bit. Oh, we didn't commit the last one, right? Um, <laughs> extract render effect and support for multiple render effects and switch material as needed. That's why I always write them when I do the staging, so this is use IDs, IDs instead of strings for effect selection, right? And that makes um, that move effect, effect, creation into app. That's this one here. Then actually use that. Replace a string and this is much more efficient now. So switch all these to this. Uh, we don't create the ID anymore, but we say, hey, the first one is a default whatever ID that has, just the first one that gets added. We might skip ID, so we can't rely on the ID. Um, Remove the initialization here, which I'll leave in for one or two commits. Uh, at the beginning of the frame, uh, ensure at least one material at the beginning of a frame and make it active. So we always have an active material, that's one of our rules, right? So, and then this is the ID change, and this is just the length helper, and the effect now has the ID, the name is just for debugging and not needed for tech reasons anymore. That's fine. That's fine, and we have the effect IDs, right? Not sure why this is highlighted different, but... So, let's push this, and I actually... Let's do a quick test on Windows, right? Oh, now you can see me when I'm working on the other laptop. Uh, not computer. Git fetch. I kind of like this white angle, but the green screen needs to be so big. 
Yeah, th th this is for another uh, upcoming project, uh, but git fetch, git rebase, cargo run release. Let's see if we get white and colored stuff on the screen. And that is working as well on Windows. I don't have a Linux box right now, I'm sorry about this. Do you know how hard it is to draw with a mouse? And I draw like 10,000 quads with every mouse click, so... We have half a million now. Because, ah, and you see how it's starting to skip mouse input now. Right, if I move fast, it's at 600,000 now. It's still only two render batches, so. So. Ooh, nice. So. Thanks for being here. Don't forget to follow. Yada, yada, yada. I'll be back in, I don't know. It's sunny outside. I'm going to go for a bike ride. And then, let me do textures later today. Well, let's see. See ya.